Alrighty, welcome back. Once again, we're just going through the code and implementing what we've already done in the tutorials into a MVVM project, creating a basic vector graphic. We need some columns here. This is our main window. So we are going to implement our split view now, a custom split view. Although WPF doesn't have a split view, it's actually fairly easy to implement. I think I'm going to put a tutorial out there on this to make things even easier. Basically we have five columns uh, since we're doing a double panel split view, a panel on the left and a panel on the right. So those panels by default, the first, um, the first and last panel is actually for control buttons for uh, toggle buttons. The second and fourth panel is for the actual or the actual panels. They'll have the tree view on the left and the properties on the right. And then the center panel is the content, what we are displaying. When we toggle this toggle button, a converter, well first of all it will actually well, not this toggle button, that's the show handles button. But when we toggle the toggle button this one, it will actually um, it will actually fire a, a event. Uh, if both the checked and unchecked events will both fire the same event if they own the individual ones. And then we will call a method in the code behind that says to either hide or show the panels. And we will also have a visibility converter to hide and show anything inside of them so they don't kind of pop their heads out a little bit in the grid, so to speak. And plus we can put uh, buttons, the sort buttons and so forth in the very first column. So we want to hide those whenever we hide the panel. All we want to see when the panel is hidden is that one button. Now this is the uh, path. The M is for move to. You're moving your cursor to a certain point. The L is for line to. We're making a line to that point. The difference between a path and a path icon, we, don't ha we do not have path icons in WPF, but the difference is that the path icon does disable if the command, if it's connected to a command that is marked that it cannot execute. And that just is the standard uh, toggle button for button for uh, panels. Is all I've drawn there. And now the new layer button that should be self-explanatory. Our layer. Even if we did put a base item in our main view to represent the main view itself, we would still have to have a new layer button because the new layer is at the very top and that wouldn't be shown in the tree view. So we still need another button to say new layer. Now I need to add the references to the converters and put them in the app, the actual app XAML class, so they will be available to the entire project, not just to the single form. So I'm referencing the namespace. I like to give them the same key as their name, just lowercase. And I typed name up there, my mistake. So I just give it a first lowercase to make it more identifiable. 
in this stack panel will be using the Boolean visibility converter. Which basically says if the toggle button is, is clicked, is selected, is checked, then this panel will be visible. And then we will resize the actual columns in the code behind. So a good example of using code behind with MVVM. Still using the event structure. Now, of course, you could turn this into a control, a custom control. I just didn't see a need for it in this little project. Tutorial might have been two hours long, but it is actually a little project. So now our other commands, our command buttons, our new, our delete, our move up, move top, move down, move bottom. And they do need to be bound two ways because they bind, they try to bind to the command immediately and the command's not created necessarily yet. So when you do the new statement, I don't know, maybe that problem's been fixed, but I don't feel like testing it right now. It's not really a problem either. But when we clear the command as new in the code behind, we need it to fire off the on property change. I've always had bad luck on the scroll bars. If you don't set them to auto, that's supposed to be the default, or it was originally listed as a default value on the scroll bar visibility. But I've always had bad luck if I don't actually set it to auto. And our canvas really should be bound to a size in the main view, but we don't have that out there right now. There's a bunch of little things that need to go on in this. Of course, we need actual corner events or mouse events in the case of WPF. 
will be binding the canvas, so we will be using the items control item template. Did I mess something there? Items panel, should I say? My brain is telling me I've messed something. I've put a typo in here, but I don't see it. <laughs> All right, we'll be coming back to this, I think. And so we will do a mouse up on, it's going to create a canvas for literally every shape, every path, or every shape that we have, so. And here is our right toggle button for our right panel. So just copy and paste the path down there. It's the same path, same icon. Now our content control, actually for our right panel, it will use our converter, our control factory, our view factory. You can tell people you may, you know how to make a view factory if you didn't before. They cannot argue. I'll expect the very complicated ones are very much like our little simple one. You return in the proper control to display everything. Alrighty, let's put our code behind in place. First up front, I want to put my view model in here. set my view model equal to something. So the view model is based on the data context. Although we will have, we will not be putting the grid splitter in here right now. To make it resizable, to make the panels resizable, I went ahead and created some local fields that would hold the values of how wide we want each panel when they're open. And we're just defaulting them to 256. Sense is messing with me. It knows I've been talking bad about it. It has very thin skin. are calling a certain function to be close together. So we want to pass in the actual width of our window, minus 16. Set 
actual selected item of our model. variable saying that our mouse is clicked is down in a pointer uh, point to uh, where it was clicked. And since we're only working with isolation mode right now, we will loop through, well, we'll loop through the vertices of the selected segment. So we will not actually be selecting other segments. This is segment we have selected in the tree view. It's the only one we can edit at a time. So our point, our selection area is 16 by 16 around our vertice. We have to click in that area to grab a point to move it. That includes the handles for the curves. Once we find one, we'll break. Pointer down is equal to false. If our mouse is up or we leave the area, now we have mouse move. This gets more and more complicated as you get more advanced with application like this, but this, in this version, it's very simple. We will be finding the difference between our current mouse position and our last mouse position. And then we'll be updating the last mouse position to the current mouse position. And we'll be updating the point that we have selected by how much it's moved versus we will not be setting it directly to the current mouse position, but we'll be updating by how much it moves. And while that sounds a little bit unnecessary, if you don't do it this way and you move your mouse too fast, you will actually lose the pointer because the mouse pointer will go a little bit off of what you have selected and that will actually cause it to lose it, that'll lose the point. Because each of our shapes are inside of a canvas, inside of our items panel. And we're also checking if this curve is closed, then we're updating the vertices appropriately. So if we have the last vertice selected and it's closed, we're setting it to the first value, or we're set, if we have the first one selected and it's we and we set the and it's closed, we're setting the last vertice equal to the first, and vice versa. And we just call needs refresh. We tell the view model, yeah, you need a refresh. You need to rebuild your canvas. All right, if you got something out of this, like and subscribe. All glory be to God, and I'll see you in the next video.